Johnny and Dolly. The team is supported by ableauctions.ca. Closing your business? We can help. All of today's guests, including John Shannon. Remember the song Shannon by Henry Gross? That was more 70s. No, I don't remember that. Today's guests are brought to you by the Vancouver Giants. Giants return to the LEC tomorrow to take on Kamloops. It's White Spot Legends Weekend to help celebrate anniversary 50 of the Canada-Russia Summit Series in 72. Giants will be wearing Team Canada jerseys. There will be four members of the 72 Canadian team there at the LEC. Ivan Cornwier, Cornwier, Dennis Hull, Pete Mahovlich, and Dale Talon. Get all of your ticket pa- packages and info at VancouverGiants.com slash tickets. We're getting a late push for one of the great albums, which included some of the great songs uh, of the 80s, uh, Dire Straits. Oh, Money they were for good. Nothing, the uh, album, of course, Brothers uh, in Arms. As we bring in John Shannon, <laughs> NHL analyst and co-host of the Bob <laughs> McCowan <laughs> podcast. Looks like he's uh, ready to do some talking. How are you, sir? I'm well. By the way, uh, Sunday nights on uh, on LG seventy three was Casey Kasem in the American. No, Club. no, yes, no, it was. no. It was. That's John, right. John, Dick it Clark, was Dick Clark Dick first. Clark, Dick American Dick Clark, Dick, Dick Clark never hosted a top forty radio. Show. I'm going to go back, and I'm going <laughs> to double triple check. You go back. You I go remember back. Dick Clark Sunday yeah. nights on LG seventy three. I am going to. I'm going back. Hmm. That's when he first started to way, drink Crown, I think. Uh, <laughs> K- and, K- and, and Casey Kasem, by the way, was more famous for, for something else, though, right? Scooby-Doo. He Scooby-Doo. was the voice of Shaggy. He was oh, the voice of Shaggy at Scooby-Doo. But he was a good DJ. Very good. Oh, he's bad. But, and, and by the way, uh, lived in Gig Harbor, not uh, not far from Seattle. Really? And so, yeah, yeah. So there you go. Probably, probably could have watched the show if he was still alive. There is a YouTube uh, video out there. I guess it's 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 audio yeah. of Casey Kasem ripping uh, into his producer. Oh, you, I got that, John. That's uh, and, yeah. and God rest his uh, soul. But I'll never forget uh, hearing better, that. Better him than time. me. Yes, that's <laughs> <laughs> that's true. We've all had our moments in this business, right? Uh, you, Absolutely. You've had you have some news on on Alex. Edward, yeah, no, John? N- yeah, yeah. Nothing's going to happen to him. Okay. Uh, the league did look at it, and uh, the league felt that. Uh, he was bracing himself for a collision, and that uh, between uh, Edler and the other Kings player, Connor actually jumped into him. So nothing's mm. going to happen. Um, what's What's your opinion of that? Given that the other person involved was arguably the best player in the world. You know, I think I think there's a, a consistency the league's tried to have. Whether it's you know, it's not the NBA where where superstars do get special yep. treatment. And and you can you can either uh, argue on either side of the ledger whether we should be looking after superstars more or treat them just as regular players. So uh, it it was close to me, I, you know. But I uh, I don't want to be one of those guys that uh, has a pardon the pun, but a knee jerk reaction <laughs> to a collision. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I, I'm not surprised that uh, nothing other than the two minute minor occurred. Do you know what Edler's rep is in NHL circles, uh, John? Because yeah, here I in think Vancouver, it's fine. It's fine? Okay. Yeah, yeah, I think it's fine. There's, there, there are a lot of guys with a lot of guys on the Kings. Heck, if you know, then that with a tougher reputation than than Alex Edler. Ed, Edler's a hardworking warrior when it comes to this game, and I don't have to tell people in Vancouver how many times that Edler play hurt over the years he was with the Canucks. Yeah, yes, yeah, big time. Uh, he, he admitted publicly that by the way, by his the way, back by will the never way. be the same. There you go. By the way, we we are live. we are we are live. Thank you for that. <laughs> Thank you for that. Um, Bruce Boudreaux's job status here, here, and he's still head coach uh, of the Vancouver Canucks. It may very well be till the end of the season, uh, John. But names being thrown around: Rick Tockett and Andrew uh, Brunette. Andrew Brunette with the sizzling hot New Jersey Devils. Do you expect him to get, whether it's in Vancouver or not, another shot at being the head coach of an NHL team? Oh, sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I mean, what Andrew did in taking over from Joel Quenville. Last year in Florida was was pretty impressive. Um, it, it just so happened that the guys in Florida wanted to make a number of changes to the personality of their team, and that included the guy behind the bench. But there's no question that uh, Andrew Burnett will get another chance. And Andrew's in in terms of coaching, Andrew's a, a young guy, and and the, it, his time will certainly come 
uh, at, at an at, at you know in the next couple of years and i suspect that we're not going to have what we had over the last 12 or 13 months where we had 13 coaching changes 13 uh which is quite a phenomenal number but certainly andrew will be will be given a chance at an appropriate time John, when is it going to happen? Everybody thinks uh, Bruce is going to get fired. And, uh, you know, you're hearing names. Talk it, Burnett. Uh, we've seen the criticism from management of the coach. Uh, what's your guts in? Well, uh, you know what? My, my heart breaks a little bit because yeah. I like Bruce so much. Uh, I think the fans like Bruce. Um, I, I don't really understand it. Other than we've known and we've heard all along, Rick, and you, you've you reported it well, that uh, there has been a disconnect between Patrick and Bruce more so than anybody because of Bruce's lack of desire to use analytics and, 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 and use aspects of the, 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 the science of hockey uh, to better his team. Uh, I, I think that if you sat with Bruce, he would disagree and says he uses analytics to a certain point. You know, the, the, the problem becomes um, if you speculate too much and something, nothing happens. I, I do know that as as angry and, and perturbed as Jimmy has been in the last couple of radio and, and TV interviews, uh, he's also a patient guy and doesn't make knee-jerk reactions. And, I you know, and, and I, I, I thought after the game in Buffalo, if, if they were going to make the move, it was a three-day window that it would happen – probably that way and then but you have to look at the schedule um i don't even want to speculate because i don't want it to happen and i and and that becomes a that becomes an issue of dealing with friends and so it, it to me it's it's a really uncomfortable situation to be talking about candidates when bruce is still the coach yeah yeah uh so jim rutherford was in toronto saturday toronto yep. happens to be the place where bo horvat's agent pat morris lives uh, yeah. The Canucks did not meet. Uh, Jim did not uh, call up Pat and said, let's talk, let's have a coffee, let's have nothing. Uh, are you surprised? No, because, um, you, know, they, you know, the guys at Newport, uh, they have their ducks in a row, and Jimmy understand, Jimmy and Patrick understand what's going on. You know, they'll communicate at, at an appropriate time. This is... You know, I think the days of saying, well, we, you know, are coming to Toronto, let's get together. I think that world has changed so much uh, between, you know, technology, whether it's Zoom or whether it's, I mean, heck, we can find any manager any, in any country all over the world now and, and be able to talk to them on the phone. So I, I'm not surprised. Uh, it, it Was it disappointing? Ah, maybe a little bit. But at the same time, you know, with everything that was going on with Hall of Fame week, uh, and Jimmy being a member of the Hall of Fame. I saw Jimmy briefly on Monday night. Uh, he did not look very happy, <laughs> even though <laughs> even though uh, uh, it was supposed to be a celebration night, and then his team went to Buffalo and won. So uh, it, it's, uh, it's one of those things where you just have to, I think, understand the climate of what's going on, and, and who knows. I, I, you know, it, the, the question for me now will be, the question for me on the Horvat situation is: What's Horvat's philosophy? What will what will the Horvat position be? Will he be more willing to be traded? Hmm. Will he will he be more willing to wait the season and then he gets to decide completely in the off season, in the off season whether he wants to play in Vancouver or not or wherever he wants to play? Yeah. To me, that makes more sense than anything else right now is wait the season and then see what happens on free agency next July 1st. And, John, quickly, we talked about Andrew Burnett. Uh, the Devils in Toronto tonight, they won 10 straight games. Uh, Tom Fitzgerald, Lindy Ruff, Marty Berdeer is there as well. How much respect is that organization building up right now? Well, I'll tell you what, it, it's, it's been one uh, that ownership there gave Tom Fitzgerald a, a mandate, and they were very patient. Uh, we all thought that the Devils were going to be too small. We all thought that they, you know, they didn't have commitment. And what Lindy Ruff has put on the ice as a coach, they've done a magnificent job. And and really, in the end, Donnie, mm -hmm. they're getting goaltending. You know, uh, prior to his injury, Blackwood had been good. Uh, Vanacek has been fantastic. And they're finally getting goaltending. They've always had speed. They've always had a system. And now they have both, plus the goaltending is pretty, pretty good. 
John, thanks for this. Uh, appreciate it. Yeah, it, 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 as long as the guy in the, from the '80s doesn't think that it was Dick Clark on Sunday hey, night, I'm hey, fine. Hey, hold it a second. I, 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 I've got somebody that worked well, at LG73. I just texted him. Now, He's on it. Oh, yeah. He's going to get back to me. I am a convinced it was uh, Dick Clark every Sunday night. Mm -hmm. so, so our good pal Joe Leary. How old were you? How old were you then? Well, in the 80s, I was, uh, hold it a second here, 10, 11, 12, 13. You're in bed on Sunday nights at 6. <laughs> I was obviously in my teens, D but I remember Dick Clark. Go ahead, Ryan. J Joe Leary just texted me saying Dick Clark hosted a countdown show. It was called Countdown America, and we ran it when I worked in Toronto. So okay, but That's they ran Toronto. that. She, she, so I, they ran that in Vancouver. I, I need That's to, it. I need to confirm if it was also on LG. See, in Vancouver. right there. I got well, it. I well, knew it was Dick Clark. I'm, I'm, I'm bang on. LG73 was big, Donnie, back in the 80s. We'll Everybody get back is. to you on this, John. <laughs> we'll, we'll get back to you. <laughs> I can hardly wait. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thanks, John. John Shannon. Hey.